So the Adeptus Custodes have a new and interesting army-wide special rule today. The shield hosts will be able to adopt different stances on different turns, giving them some interesting bonuses on the table. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel, where today we're talking about the new Custodes rule preview, an army-wide special rule that Games Workshop is calling Martial Katars. It looks like Custodes might well be similar to Space Marines and the sheer amount of layers of special rules on them with this. It seems likely that they're still going to have that Ages of the Emperor rule, in addition to new Shield Company chapter tactics type rules, and now this layered on top of it. So let's take a look at what these battle stances can do. So the new special rule that Games Workshop has coughed up for the Custodes is called the Martial Qatar. It looks to be an army-wide special rule, unless there's any specific rules saying that things like Dreadnoughts might not be able to get it, and I very strongly suspect that this is going to be the rule that the entire army gets if your entire army is from Adeptus Custodes. It's perhaps one of the more complicated army-wide special rules that we've seen so far, seeming quite similar to basically a blend between the Necron Command Protocols and the Space Marine Combat Doctrines. The rules do seem to keep them relatively flexible, though I must admit it does look to be a bit of a chore to keep track of in-game, and I can't say that the way that they've written the rule is the most clear to be honest. It did take me a couple of read-throughs to get my head around it. Basically, it seems like the custodians are going to get a whole list of these Martial Qatar rules, their individual rules. Each Martial Qatar is a rule that's made up of two different stances, two separate special rules, and each Martial Qatar has a name that isn't actually a normal word, just to make things a little bit more confusing. Before each game, you get to see your opponent's army, and then select a primary, secondary, and tertiary Qatar to potentially take effect during the game. You seem to do this after deployment, but before first turn, so it's actually relatively late compared with when a lot of similar abilities are selected. From there, in each of your command phases, you declare which Qatar and stance you will use in that turn. You basically have to progress through the Qatars, you must start with your primary one, then go on to your secondary one, and then your tertiary one, and you can't go backwards once you've progressed, so you can't go back to your primary one after you've used a secondary. And whenever you select one, you must choose stance 1 or stance 2 to take effect, and each stance can only be used once. So say for example in turn 1, you'd be able to use your primary Qatar, you could choose either stance 1 or stance 2 to take effect, and then in your next turn you'd have the choice of either progressing to your secondary one, or using the other stance of the primary one that you hadn't used yet. For example, you could do turn 1, you could use your primary Qatar stance 2, turn 2 you could go into your primary 1 stance 1, then you could go to a secondary 1 and say use the second stance out of that, and then in the last 2 turns make use of the tertiary Qatar. I think it's simple enough once you get your head around it, but I could imagine it could cause a little bit of decision paralysis at the start of the game, as I'm going to guess there's going to be a fair number of these, I'm going to guess there'll at least be 6, if not more. It could just be a bit of a pain to weigh up lots of minor abilities and decide which ones are going to be the most helpful in the game that you're in at the moment. Still though, when you do get it worked out, I think it will be quite a fun mechanic. It feels pretty powerful whenever you can essentially give an order and your army adopts a different fighting tactic, and some of the ones that they've previewed do seem like they could be quite good. Apparently some of the shield companies will be able to do some of the Qatars better than others. Maybe it might be slightly similar to the Necron process, where certain dynasties can make use of both parts of their command protocol at once. In any case, let's take a look at some of these actual Qatars then. Games Workshop's preview 3, and the first one is this Callistus one, which they recommend as a primary. I'm not sure if these are locked into primary, secondary and tertiary, or you can just choose whichever in whichever order at this point. In any case, Callistus certainly looks good as a primary one. As expected, there's two different stances. The first one I find a little bit mediocre, it's basically roll 2d6 when you advance and you discard the lowest, meaning that you'll get a little bit of a movement buff. Usually though, that averages you less than an extra inch in movement, so it's really not all that great in my opinion. But I guess it does provide a little bit of insurance against rolling really low. You'd be quite unlucky to get less than a 3 with that. It certainly doesn't hurt though on the first turn of moving up. It's the second part that I think is really quite interesting though. If any of your units make a normal move or advances in your movement phase, in your following shooting phase, it counts as having remained stationary. I must admit, I think that one's really quite nice. Basically, provided your unit isn't going to charge in the charge phase, you may as well advance with literally everything. It doesn't matter whether you're firing rapid fire, assault, or heavy weapons, you'll be able to advance and still shoot normally. That could be really nice with anything armed with guardian spears, perhaps those Sagittarum custodies with those bolt casters, and in particular, if this is usable on the custodies' vehicles, then that'll be quite a nice movement buff on them. 
Those Contemptra, Killus, or Galatus Dreadnoughts will really thank you for getting an extra D6 movement or still being able to fire their very decent guns. A turn of advance and shoot for no penalty seems like a really good buff to me. The secondary one that they've shown off is called Dactari, and this one seems to be styled as an anti-horde buff, which if you've got droves and droves of enemy warriors coming at you, apparently this is a good one to choose. First up is a potentially quite powerful debuff to the enemy piling in and consolidating. Usually in the fight phase you get to pile in 3 inches and consolidate 3 inches, but this stance will take that down to just 1 inch each for most enemies that are fighting you. That genuinely could be very annoying for big combat units that really want to be maximising the bodies that they can pile to the front lines, or even just anyone trying to gain a bit of extra movement in the fight phase, making the best use of the 3 inch pile in and consolidate. This will slow them right down. I guess this is perhaps going to be most powerful on enemy enemy units that are charging from a really long distance away. Every time this makes a model unable to fight because it can't get with an engagement range, that's going to be really great. But it often might not stop things quite so well if they are already quite close. Maybe a tiny bit more situational, but I could see this being truly annoying in the right circumstances. The other one seems quite nice as well, as it's basically a direct damage increase against one wound infantry. Basically each time your custodies units fight, you get the option to make all of your attacks damage 1, but you get plus 1 attack. Most of the time custodians are going to be fighting with damage 2 or greater, so usually that will be a trade-off against anything that's mortal wounds, to the extent where it's usually only going to be worth doing if you're fighting anything with 1 wound, say Orc Boys, Sisters of Battle, or the enemy's basic troops. I guess it's just pure win for anything that had damage 1 to start with. Some of the Forge World custodians units do have that, so that's kind of nice for them. Overall, I'd say that this one is kind of nice to use, but maybe not quite as powerful as that primary one with the shoots as if stationary. Finally, we have the tertiary Qatar, which is one called Captaris, where the aim is apparently to trap enemies in combat with the custodies. The first part could be handy against certain melee armies. It means that the enemy won't be able to make use of any rerolls to hit in melee. I guess not too bad at countering certain buffing characters or anything with maybe inbuilt re-rolls to hit, such as the Sisters of Battle with the Zealot rule. Kind of handy enough, but it's unlikely to apply across a whole army like some of the other buffs, and I'm not sure how relevant that one's going to be. Finally though, the stance 2 for this I think is quite a lot more interesting. That one's one that stops the enemy from falling back quite as easily. You roll off against your opponent, and if you win they can't fall back, and that could be really quite nice if it means they have to keep something in combat with your powerful custodies that they really don't want to keep there. It doesn't affect monsters and vehicles though, so they're still fine, and enemies with fly get a plus one to the roll, meaning that they're not quite as easy to pin down. I guess you could make some genuine strategic plays with this one, maybe try and charge into one enemy unit, and then kill it and consolidate into the next, then hopefully stop them from being able to fall back with this power. That certainly could be seriously annoying against some shooting armies for a turn. I do kind of feel that the tertiary ones might be a little bit late in the day to make major impacts though, Possibly things like movement buffs or bonuses capturing objectives might be a little bit more used in the closing stages of the game. So overall, I think it's really quite an interesting and fun system, even if it might take a small amount of admin to keep track of. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on them down in the comments below, and any fun combos with the custodies units that you can think of. If you'd like this video and you'd like to see more like it, feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, where I'll certainly aim to keep up with Games Workshop's news and releases, and cover any new rules that they release here on the channel. I'll certainly be aiming to review the Custodies Codex in full when we do have the details in January. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page, which you can find down in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.